say you had a market where you had identified uh, five kinds of customers who fly in the market. So I have an airplane that's going to fly from Washington National to Harrisburg in the local market. I've identified that in that market there are some people who fly, uh, who, who are leisure passengers and are very price sensitive. There are some people who are flying for leisure purposes but aren't so price sensitive. At the top end there are some uh, uh, high-priced business executives who have to make their trip and have very, uh, uh, you know, a very high willingness to pay. They, do, they need a seat, they need us to guarantee that they'll have a seat, but they're willing to pay uh, top dollar for it. And, and say the prices for those five products are 500, 400, 300, 200, and 100 dollars. So now I know the price, the set of prices, and I know the five categories of people that I want to sell to. The next step in revenue management is I have to predict how many of each kind of passenger there are going to be, are, are going to show up looking for this flight between now and the time that the flight's going to take off. Okay, and so now this is the forecasting test. So I know the price, now I have to, for each, each uh, customer type, forecast the number of passengers who will want to buy that, pack, uh, that uh, product. And then I can start to revenue manage. The forecasting is, it's easy to say, just get a forecast. The forecasting is a little bit complicated. You, you have to do, you, you look at similar flights in the past, you look at things that are going on in the marketplace, and you, uh, you do the very best job that you can of predicting how many people are going to come. The forecasts are variable, though, and, and uh, there's a lot of math behind them. You can get up the road here at MIT, you can get a PhD in revenue management. So I'm, I'm not saying this is really simple stuff, but you come up with your forecast and say in the 500, this is an expensive visual aid that I've got here, in the $500 category, you predict, based on the past uh, uh, performance of the flight, that 10 people are going to show up for the $500 fare, and that 20 people are going to show up for the $400 fare. And then you make a prediction for the 300 and the 200 and the 100, and some of the predictions sort of uh, meld together a little bit. But let's start with the top end. Then what you do in revenue management is you sort of think backwards because what you do is imagine from today to the time the, you know, when, when the airplane takes off, how many passengers will I have? And think backwards to today, how many passengers do I want to encourage to get on this plane in order to have that number of passengers when I finally take off? That's the backwards part. And the upside down part is you start with the top fare and you work your way down. And as you can imagine, the people who are, who are going to be paying $100, if you're going to let any of them onto that airplane, that's because those are the seats that are left up, left after you accommodate the 500s, the 400s, the 300s, the 200s, the 100s. That's the math, the fairly arcane math of revenue management.